Florida, no doubt, has some crazy wildlife. <laughs> We're known for our gators, lizards, and more than 40 native species of snakes. In today's Science of it, Alex Elise, he's at the Orlando Science Center, introducing us to one of the slithery, slithery reptiles. Why does it always have to be <laughs> snakes? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Science of It at the Orlando Science Center. I'm here with Tori, and who is this? Who do we have this week? This is Blue, and she is an eastern indigo snake, and these are native to Florida. Okay. Tell me uh, a little bit about Blue. Yeah, they're a little harder to find um, compared to your black racer, your um, black rat snake. A lot of people will confuse them with those species. We have 44 different snake species here in Florida. Okay. Very easily to get them confused. Yes. But these ones stand out because they can grow up to eight feet long. Wow. They're also iridescent in the sunlight. It's hard to show that indoors. Okay. I don't really have the natural sun. Uh, but she kind of looks like a rainbow. Oh, yeah, so if you've shimmer. ever, yeah, a shimmer. If you've ever been in like a parking lot and you see the oil spot and it's like rainbow colored, it's going to be a coloration really similar to that and very few snakes have that iridescence so that's why they're very called beautiful. indigos because um, they are like indigo in the sunlight okay now I see her eyes look a little opaque what, what's up with that yeah yeah they definitely stand out right she usually does have those deep very dark like obsidian colored eyes but she's actually in her shed cycle right okay. now so currently there is fluid between her new skin and her old skin that's what you're seeing there that fluid because she does not have eyelids uh, oh. so should that scale is over her eye there's fluid in between her new eye scale and her old eye scale we okay. call that an eye cap um, and she will shed her skin all at one time not going to be like us and she'll have that new um, eye cap on there that lens scale and brand new scales and then she'll leave something very similar to this in her enclosure this isn't actually from her this is from a pine snake okay. uh, but you can see that she'll get rid of that dead skin and then grow some be new, beautiful skin. Nice, so tell me about uh, the conservation of these animals. Yes, right, so not a lot of people are familiar with SSPs, mm -hmm. Species Survival Plans, but that's actually one of the main reasons why zoos and other animal care facilities exist, is actually to save animals from extinction. Okay. And indigo snakes are threatened here in Florida. Uh, they're a big, beautiful, relatively calm snake when yeah. you train them. Like I said, they grow up to eight feet long. They can be as thick as your arm if it's a wow. male breeding adult. So a lot of people saw this beautiful snake outside and thought, I'm just going to take that home. That's going to be my yeah. pet. And everybody all had the same idea. Um, when a thousand people do it, it really affected their populations. Okay. Uh, so conservationists, scientists, and some lawmakers all got together. It's mainly zoos that are driving this. SSP plans were started by AZA in about um, in 1981. That's the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So okay. a lot of those AZA accredited facilities are going to be a part of SSP's PC survival plan. Now, what can someone at home do to help with this stuff? I'm guessing don't grab animals out from the wild. Yes, right? That's always kind of the theme um, is that we don't want to touch wildlife. We don't want to take an animal home, even though with some species it is legal. If there's yeah. an abundant species, um, depending on what it is, you can take one individual home as a pet. I don't recommend doing that because, like I said, that's kind of what happened with indigo snakes. Yeah. Um, so it's better to leave animals out in um, the little nature that we have left. Okay. But if you want to learn more about indigo snake breeding here in Florida, there's actually a really cool AZA accredited facility that you folks can visit. It's called the OCIC. Orient Center for Indigo Conservation. So on top of having a breeding population there in captive care, they also reintroduce them into nature. So okay. since they've been open, it's been about 12 years, they've released almost 200 snakes wow. back into nature. It's a very successful breeding program. And they also do research in coordination with other um, universities and facilities like LSU. They currently have a research project going right now to study how um, they can store and extract semen from these snakes to be to sent to other oh. facilities because it's a lot harder um, to ship a snake across the country but if you can snip, ship a little vial out there yeah. um, we can get those genetics across to different zoos and facilities they also have another research study about nutrition because okay. uh, these animals eat venomous snakes really that's one of the most important reasons why we need um, indigo snakes here in Florida they are immune to rattlesnake venom and they help us control those populations okay 
Uh, so they are researching to see um, how well they do on a high protein, low fat diet. Since they eat a lot of reptiles, yes. um, they're testing with three different groups, um, different food items and different ways, different concentrations of fat and proteins to see which ones thrive the best. Wow. So they can put that inside a care manual and share that with other zoos and aquariums and breeding facilities. So it's pretty amazing. You guys probably visit zoos and you think it's just entertainment or some education, yeah. uh, but they're actually really important for saving wildlife and habitats. Awesome. And if people want more information about where they can see a blue or some of the other animals here, where can they go for that? So we have a meet a snake program that happens every day at 1130. Mm -hmm. And we also have our Life with Animals Showcase that happens on 110. And those more information about the shows, the locations, the times can be found on our website, which is osc.org. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for introducing me to Blue. Thanks so much for talking all about the conservation. Thanks for joining us here on The Science of It. All right, and this was special for our producer, Emily, who loves snakes. Good for you, Emily. <laughs> uh, they're all yours. And if you're interested in seeing these reptiles or other critters in the exhibits at the Science Center, it's open every day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Just keep in mind, this time of the year, it's closed on Wednesdays. And still ahead on Sunrise, we're